Our next test for seeing whether a series converges or diverges is called the direct comparison test. And the goal of this test is to compare the series we're interested in to a similar series that we know the answer for. And in practice that means it has to look like a p-series or a geometric series. So when we were looking at p-series I gave the example at the end of 1 over k squared plus 4 which looks a lot like 1 over k squared but it's not exactly 1 over k squared. So it looks a lot like a p-series even though it's not exactly equal to it but we can compare one to the other. So if we have a series that looks close to a p-series or close to a geometric series without exactly being in that form we may be able to compare it. Now the direct comparison test is pretty limited as we'll see and it turns out that our next comparison test, the limit comparison test, is broader in its application. And anything we can do with the direct comparison test, we can also do with the limit comparison test. So after we see this example we'll do here, we won't really use this test very much. We'll kind of default to the limit comparison test because it's a safer option, it works more often, and is often easier to do as well. But the direct comparison test is a good introduction because it gets us thinking about how to compare a series to another one. So I've drawn a picture here and we're visualizing two series. One of them is the one we're looking for the answer to and the other is one that we can compare it to, one that we already know the answer for. And for this to work, a specific pattern has to emerge that one of them has to always be larger than the other. So I'm calling the lower one A sub K and the upper one B sub K. So B is always larger than A. All the values are larger for all values of K greater than or equal to one. And both of these have to be positive. So it has to fit this visual here. If the order was swapped, we could just relabel them. But if they ever cross, then this approach won't work. And the idea is that if the upper one converges, it will force the lower one to converge as well. So if this upper one converges, kind of squeezing down the lower one, the lower one is forced to converge as well. On the other hand, if the lower one diverges, then the upper one will be forced to diverge as well because it's above that divergent one. So that's what the direct comparison test says. And again, it's fairly limited. If the upper series diverges, that tells us nothing about the lower series. Or if the lower series converges, that tells us nothing about the upper series. So it's fairly limited in application because we might get the wrong answer for the one that we're interested in. Let me show you an example that we've already introduced. If we want to know whether the series 1 over k squared plus 4 converges or diverges. Again, we notice first that it looks like 1 over k squared. And adding 4 in the denominator each time doesn't seem like it's a dramatic enough change to change this 1 over k squared from converging to diverging. So our intuition is that 1 over k squared plus 4 probably converges because it's like a convergent p-series. But to use the direct comparison test to prove that, we need to start with this convergent p-series and we have to prove that 1 over k squared plus 4 is below 1 over k squared. If 1 over k squared plus 4 is above 1 over k squared, then the direct comparison test tells us nothing at all. So this is what I'm talking about when I say this test is kind of limited, but we have to prove the right direction to this inequality. So we want to show that 1 over k squared plus 4 is always less than or equal to 1 over k squared, as long as k is greater than or equal to 1. So one way to do this is to say, okay, that would be true as long as k squared is less than or equal to k squared plus 4. How did I do that? Well, I multiplied both sides by k squared and I multiplied both sides by k squared plus 4 
Or you could just think about the fact that if the denominator k squared is smaller than the denominator k squared plus four, then the fraction one over k squared will be larger than the fraction one over k squared plus four. And of course, that's trivially true because zero is less than or equal to four. So it works out. We can kind of test that that is in fact below it. So because we know that one over k squared converges and we know that one over k squared plus four is always below this convergent one, we know that one over k squared plus four converges as well. But what if the question was changed slightly to one over k squared minus four? Could we apply the same approach? And the problem is we couldn't because one over k squared minus four is slightly greater than one over k squared. It's only slightly greater than one over k squared and it turns out that it also converges but the direct comparison test doesn't have the power to tell us that. And so for that we actually need what's called the limit comparison test which is the next one we'll look at. So as I said in practice we're not generally going to use the direct comparison test much because it's fairly limited and the limit comparison test could answer both of these questions even though the direct comparison test can only answer one of them.